anti-lockdown protesters tried to capture a Scottish castle. They failed. The siege of Edinburgh Castle by anti-lockdown protesters, the fact that they called it a siege is killing me, underlines the spread of radical sovereign citizen ideology across the world. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Common Sense Academy. I'm your host, Joe Palmetto, Joe the Lawyer. On this channel, we talk about sovereign citizens. We watch their videos. We break down their nonsense. Today, I got a good news story for you where some sovereign citizens tried to siege, lay siege to Edinburgh Castle, which, although I've never been there, I once watched a documentary on Edinburgh Castle. You can find it on Netflix about British castles and it looks like a super freaking cool castle. If you like my content, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Also, check out my other channel, Joe the Lawyer. The link is in the description below. There, I just talk about straight legal content. Here, we go for the sovereign citizens. Now, before we dig into the rest of the article, raise your cup in the air. Cheers with me because the same time, the same time sip, it tastes better when we sip together. Today I got, I got some water. I got smart water. You know why? Because we all need our electrolytes. Cheers with me, whether you got a beer, wine, water, coffee, Coke, something crazy. Cheers. Oh, I can taste the electrolytes. It makes the water better. <laughs> All right, let's read about the siege of Edinburgh Castle. Look at that castle. Look at how beautiful that is. Amazing. And this article is from uh, August 18th, so I'm a little behind. Around 20 protesters have attempted to seize Edinburgh Castle under common law. The group entered the historical castle, one of Scotland's most famous symbols, without tickets on Tuesday evening, claiming they were taking back the castle under Article 61 of Magna Carta. We've all heard this before. The 800-year-old Charter of Rights, signed by England's King John, who's, who's notoriously known as, I, I believe, Bad King John, to appease a group of rebel barons. Members of the public were evacuated during the protest and a police officer received minor injuries while arresting one of the group. The group, referring to themselves on Twitter as Sovereign Scots who were laying siege to the castle, broadcast their protest in a 13-minute video on Facebook Live which has since been removed from the platform. I wish we had it! A man at the protest accused the government of treason, saying we can't sit back and let everyone perish under the stupid legislation and fraudulent government tyranny, so let's just take it all back, not just the castle. A woman said that Scots have been lied to all our lives and had taken the castle back to restore the rule of law under Article 61 of Magna Carta. The reference to the clause, which granted a group of 25 barons in 1215, we're talking about 800 years ago, to seek redress from the monarch if the charter was not honor honored and assail him if no redress was made is legal gibberish. According to fact-checking website Full Fact, and I trust me, I don't believe all fact-checking websites, all right? It only ever applied to a small group of nobles, was swiftly removed from the charter when it was reissued a year later, and was never incorporated into law. The Magna Carta, there are some clauses that still, I believe, have the force of law today, but not many of them. This is ridiculous. But this piece of pseudo-legal nonsense is frequently cited as a sort of right to rebellion or excuse not to comply with the law by members of the UK's sovereign citizens groups who have become an increasingly visible part of the country's volatile anti-lockdown scene. And I've been saying 
for months, if not years, and especially since COVID, the sovereign citizen movement is growing because all these all these conspiracy theories can meld together, right? Right? They can combine and sort of unite. Sovereign citizens, also known as freemen on the land, especially in the UK, among other names, refers to a loose movement of fringe anti-establishes anti-establishment fanaticists fanatics i prefer that word found in many parts of the world who falsely claim they are exempt from their country's laws citing various bogus legal justifications they're known for refusing to pay taxes or fines or attempting to carry out arrests of public officials which is always entertaining using nonsensical legal jargon to attempt to justify themselves often referencing common law Experts experts monitoring the conspiracy-infused anti-lockdown movements around the world say this ideology is becoming increasingly visible in recent protests opposing coronavirus-related restrictions. I'm one of those experts. <laughs> and here's a tweet that give us some photos. Around 20 sovereign citizen activists attempted to seize Edinburgh Castle today to restore common law, citing Article 61 of Magna Carta. One of the activists told police officers they had enough of fake acts and statutes, which she said were made up by pedophiles. Let's face one reality about Magna Carta. It didn't grant rights to the average person. It did not grant rights to the peasants and the serfs. It granted rights to the nobles. And the peasants and the serfs who lived on the nobles' lands were basically uh, one, one part removed from being slaves. So I really don't think you want to go back to Magna Carta. I really don't think that's a good idea. Here we can see in these pictures, um, uh, there's a there's a guy who, well, he appears to be dressed as a police officer. I guess there's a police officer on the scene, unless that's a sovereign dressed as a police officer. There's a bald guy over here pointing and a little crowd of people. Not the greatest photos. In Germany, the Reichsburgers, citizens of the Reich who have strong right-wing extremist affiliations have been a constant strand of the country's frequently violent corona skeptic protest movement. Why would why they throw that in there? In Canada, an anti-lockdown group attempted a live-streamed arrest of the mayor of St. Catharines, Ontario in January for imposing lockdowns, claiming the right to do so under common law. Well, I think I just found my next video. In Victoria, Australia, lockdown resistors have claimed any laws since November 18th 1975 are invalid because Queen Elizabeth did not sign the state constitution in person. While in Singapore, two people who appeared in court for refusing to wear masks insisted they were sovereign and therefore exempt. Let me tell you, Singapore's the last country in the world where you want to break the law, right? They have arcane penalties. And in the UK, sovereign citizen rhetoric, often referencing Article 61, has become increasingly prevalent. At a volatile protest in Parliament Square last month, activist Mark Sexton, a retired police officer, told a crowd that unless lockdown was lifted and the vaccine rollout halted, citizens had the right to forcibly arrest politicians and establish common law courts. Let's roll down here. Here's our friend Mark Sexton. And it says, speaking of today's anti-lockdown, anti-vaccine protests in Parliament Square, retired police officer Mark Sexton says, if all COVID restrictions are not lifted and vaccinations not seized, citizens have a right to arrest ministers and MPs by force and set up common law courts. I mean, you're an ex-police officer. You used to enforce the laws of Parliament in the UK. Okay. Joe Ondrak, the head of investigation for Logically, a tech company that combats online dis disinformation, said there has definitely been an uptick in sovereign citizen activity in recent months. Fringe British common law groups have found a new currency in the anti-lockdown movement, spreading their ideology on sprawling telegram groups committed to freedom from coronavirus restrictions. He said that QAnon, another of the overlapping conspiracy movements at play in the anti-lockdown scene, appeared to have played a role in the recent 
uptick in sovereign citizen activity, QAnon networks had been making increasing reference to sovereign citizen talking points because they, they go really well together. I've talked about this many times in other videos, how QAnon sovereign citizen theory um, can both meld very closely together. QAnon networks have been making increasing reference to sovereign citizen talking points, which spilled over from the United States to anti-lockdown protest movements in other countries. He said the potential for this ideology to con con to encourage people to radical acts, insisting they were above the law and had the power to pass laws or arrest MPs, was dangerous. I agree. The encouragement and, ena and enabling of increasingly frustrated and angry crowds to conduct citizens' arrests on behalf of the people is a dangerous new aspect of the UK freedom movement. That, I think, is the main concern here. And look, I fervently support the right to protest the lockdowns or any other government policy that uh, that you do not agree with or believe in but do it in a peaceful manner and do it based there there's good there's good arguments to be made okay i'm not making those arguments but there's good sound rational arguments that are are are, are to be made in most protests but you know what happens in a lot of protests is is uh is all this nonsense is mixed in which number one can make the movement dangerous and this is true of all movements okay number one can make a movement dangerous and number two can take away from the legitimacy of the movement so when you're putting forth uh as part of your argument these these nonsensical uh, arguments it takes away from the logical and rational arguments that you should be putting forward and that may actually have an impact. I believe that's a lesson for all protest movements coming from someone who's never really protested in their life. But I've read a lot of First Amendment law. <laughs> I have, I have. Okay, everybody, thank you for tuning in. This is Joe Palmetto, Joe the Lawyer. The Sovereign Citizen Movement is rising. I'm here as part of a watchdog community, so support the show. Like, subscribe, comment, and share. Also, check out and subscribe to my other channel, Joe the Lawyer. These are free ways to support me to, and support the movement. I'm a practicing attorney in Pittsburgh, PA. I love all you guys. Peace out.